Hello, I'm David Schumperle, and today I'd like to talk about our work on automatic illumination of flat colored drawings. This is a joint work with Christine Porquet and Amal Maboubi, done at the Grec Laboratory in Caen, France. The context of this work is digital illustration. In our research team, we actually try to design automatic or semi-automatic tools for digital artists. A typical workflow for producing a digital illustration involves uh, generally three steps, which are first the creation of a line art. A line art is uh, basically a drawing composed of black strokes over a white or transparent background. And you can see here an example of line art made by digital artist David Revoix for his webcomic uh, Paper and Carrot. I recommend that you check out this page if you don't already know his work. Once the line art is complete, a flat colorization step is often performed. Uh, this stage consists in generating an, an, an additional background layer where each distinct region of the line art is filled with a constant color. So uh, after this second step, the drawing is composed of two different layers that overlap each other. Uh, as illustrated here. Note that uh, this process of flat colorization can be tedious and time consuming for the artist. So there already exist uh, digital tools based on more or less smart algorithms to help uh, artists creating this flat coloring step. You can check for instance our previous work on this topic uh, published in 2018. The third step is the illumination. It consists in adding light on shadows to the characters to bring out its uh, 3D volume. Technically speaking, this can be done by adding a new foreground layer to the drawing, uh, which contains different shades of grays, as you can see on this figure here. This additional top layer is blended over the flat color drawing using a specific blending mode, as for instance, uh, soft light, hard light, or overlay. And uh, this is this illumination step that we will try to automate with the work we present today. So our goal is to define an algorithm that is able to automatically generate an illumination layer from an input drawing. More precisely, it will only require the 2D silhouette of the character to be illuminated. One of the constraints we seek is to have a lightweight algorithm that can run on low-end computers. Uh, the method we are developing is based on two dis distinct steps. First, we design a simple method to estimate a plausible 3D elevation map from the 2D silhouette of the drawing, uh, which you can see here in the middle. This also allows us to uh, get uh, then an estimated 3D normal map. In a second step, this normal map is used to generate an illumination layer. And finally, this illumination layer is applied on the input flat color drawing to render a shaded result, eventually with different rendering styles or like positions, as shown with these two examples. So let us detail a little bit how a plausible 3D elevation map can be estimated from the flat color drawing. Uh, as I've said before, we actually only consider the binary silhouette S of the drawing, and from this silhouette, we first compute its skeleton, K, with a very simple and classical approach that is the medial axis technique introduced by Harry Bloom in 1967. Uh, this is what we get, for instance, with the silhouette of the cat. The first observation is that we can always reconstruct the silhouette S from its skeleton, K, simply by drawing a plane disk at each point of K with a radius r that is given by the distance function of the silhouette, that is to say the distance from the point of k to the closest border of s. The intersection of all these disks gives the silhouette s back. Our idea is then to slightly modify this shape reconstruction method, and instead of drawing a plane disk at each point of k, we draw a 2D real valued function that is equivalent to the elevation of a semisphere of radius r. And the intersection of all these functions at the point of S is defined to be the max of all function values passing through this point. Doing this simple operation actually generates a 3D elevation map that is often a good enough approximation for describing the 3D shape of a 2D silhouette. This simple ID 
can be mathematically formalized as follows. As you can see, this involves only simple operations and no parameters have to be set. This is a fully automatic process that actually turns out to be quite effective to get a plausible approximation of the 3D shape of a silhouette. Now that we have our 3D elevation map, let us generate the corresponding illumination layer. We rely on the well-known illumination model defined by Fong in 1975 uh, that is defined as follows. This model is basically a sum between an ambient component, a diffuse component, and a specular component. It has several parameters that can be set, for instance, the position of the light and the camera, as well as the specularity coefficient associated to the illuminated surface. This is a quite simple illumination model, but it's sufficient for our purpose here. As the front illumination model requires the normal vector to each point of the silhouette has to be known, we first have to convert our 3D elevation map into a normal map. This simply requires the computation of a spatial gradient of the elevation map. In practice, we observe that visible discontinuities often appear in the estimated normal map, due to the fact that the intersection of all the semisphere elevations use a max operator during the 3D elevation estimation step. We propose to get rid of this annoying discontinuities by smoothing the obtained uh, 3D normal map using uh, guided image filtering. This is a method proposed in the paper by Yi, Sun and Tang in 2012. This is actually a very effective and computationally inexpensive way to get a smoother normal map and thus a better elimination layer afterwards. Here you can see the results obtained for the ambient light and diffuse components on the left and the specular component in the middle for the skull image. On the right, you see the final illumination layer obtained as the sum of the ambient and specular components of the Fong illumination model. To conclude this presentation, we now illustrate the performance of our proposed method for automatic illumination with some results on synthetic and real images. And first, with a result on a synthetic image composed of simple geometric shapes. It's interesting to note that when the shape to be illuminated is a simple plane disk, its skeleton is reduced to a single point. In that case, only a single semisphere elevation function is drawn in our estimated 3D elevation map. And as a result, the illumination layer that is rendered corresponds exactly to the elimination of a single 3D sphere. Here is a result on a real image where you can see from the left to the right the input image, its skeleton and estimated 3D elevation map, its corresponding 3D normal map, as well as two examples of illuminations with different styles. The far right image used a quantized illumination layer to create a cartoon-like shading. Note that in some cases the object to be illuminated contains details inside the silhouette S, and these details must be taken into account for estimating the 3D relief of the shape. Here you have an example of the drawing of a hand, and the direct use of our technique on the corresponding 2D silhouette generates an illumination of the hand with a swollen appearance. To deal with this issue, we propose to let the user add guiding lines, uh, here colored in uh, magenta, that will serve to allow out the silhouette and allow our algorithm to add more relief inside the shape to be illuminated. We have also compared our approach with other similar methods based on the use of convolutional neural networks to estimate the 3D geometry of the shape. Experiments conducted so far have not concluded that neural networks um, perform particularly better. And moreover, our algorithm has the advantage of not requiring a computationally intensive learning phase, nor the storage of a huge amount of parameters. The algorithm complexity of our approach remains affordable and allows our method to be used on low-end machines. Finally, let us mention that our automatic illumination algorithm has been integrated into GMIC, uh, which is an open source framework for image processing, mainly developed uh, by uh, our team. So it's uh, possible to try this algorithm on your own images, 
using the plugin provided by the GMIC project and available for many image retouching and digital painting software such as GIMP, Krita, Photoshop, Affinity Photo and others. Feel free to try it out at home. This presentation is now over. Thank you for listening. Do not hesitate to contact us for more information.